Okay, so this is a completely unscripted video and I think it's gonna be pretty simple. So obviously I've got a default scene here and the core system I want to show you is a technique for scattering texture coordinates in a shader. Since you can't just click a button to make a particle system inside of a shader, you need to build it yourself since it's pretty simple to implement using just Voronoi. Basically, if you subtract these initial coordinates by the Voronoi position output, you can get this scattered coordinate system which can be used for all kinds of things. And you can use these coordinates for things like images, or if you're used to nodes, you can just make something in nodes and use these as the texture coordinates. So I went ahead and made a pretty simple pill shape, which we can scatter around our plane using these coordinates. And this is what it looks like when we just use this as our vector input. But the key here is to scale the image down so it fits in these Voronoi cells. And now we have a pretty interesting scale slider that acts almost like a particle system scale. So we can decrease the density like this, or increase it by a lot. But this doesn't look much like a particle system, because they're all facing the same direction. And that's where the other outputs of Voronoi comes into play. So if we revisit our position output from the Voronoi texture, we can actually use this as vector coordinates for simple noise. Once we do that, we get a random number for every cell. The reason I'm using noise here, and not a white noise texture, in case you're familiar with that node, is because you can change the scale here to make it feel like every cell is interacting with each other. But if you want complete randomness, you can easily plug in a white noise texture instead and get this output. But as a beginner, that might be a bit unfamiliar to you, so we could just keep with the noise. And now that we have a random number for every Voronoi cell, we can use a map range node to change this contrast. Just as a side note, I would recommend switching to map range as opposed to color ramp as often as you can since it does some stuff that the color ramp can't really do, like use noise as inputs and push values past one and zero. Of course, the map range can't directly work with color like the color ramp can, but when working with values, the color ramp is just way too finicky. So I'll actually keep my map range values to the default and take our max slider all the way to this exact number. And you'll find out in a second why I'm using this. So after we plug our noise texture into the vector rotate node, you'll see on my side that it looks like every pill is rotated randomly. And that's mostly due to this specific number. If you're used to radians or just general math, you might recognize this as 2 pi, which we can type in directly to our value node, and it'll calculate the number for us. So the reason we're doing 2pi is because this vector rotate node actually uses radians. With radians, the basic short answer is that exactly pi would be the equivalent of 180 degrees, and 2pi gives us a full rotation. So that means the map range node is spanning between 0 and 6.283, and in degrees, that would mean it's spanning between 0 and 360, which is a full rotation. So without touching any of the other parameters, keeping them at default, we get a perfect 360 rotation completely randomly. And we can decrease the scale to make every cell have more of an effect on its neighbor. If we set it to zero, they're all the same direction. If we increase it, we can see kind of a flow map for these cells where, they're, where every cell won't change that much between each other, but it's still completely random. Depends on what you're going for, I keep it high so it's random. And of course, everything past this vector rotate node can be any image we want. So here I have the nodes for the pill shape framed so it's more readable, but I'll move that up and replace it with another image. So here I've replaced the pill with subscribe buttons, which is super simple to do. I just use these texture coordinates as the input for the vector of the image and rework the mapping a bit so it would actually show the button. In case you're unfamiliar with these two kinds of texture coordinates, images will actually duplicate their picture four times when using object coordinates because of the negatives that we can see here when we make the texture viewable. So the main way to get rid of that is by shifting it by 0.5 on both axes and changing the settings from repeat to clip. You can also extend if you want to keep this red outline, or you could just use a math node to remove the negatives. So it's up to you what you do with it, of course, but just keep in mind the negatives that you see in object coordinates and maybe swap it out for UVs when you're handling an image. So I use that same mapping trick here to center the image on every cell. And we now have a pretty simple uh, scatter system. So the actual coordinates that we see here are done with only these nodes. So the actual coordinates that we see here are done with only these nodes. And you can apply this system to all kinds of shaders. 
ranging from fully procedural ones to ones heavily reliant on images. And you can really make multiple sets of these texture systems to get different scales and essentially instance any kind of shape you want in them, whether that's a pill or a box, right? And yeah, I hope you liked this pretty simple introductory video to texture systems. I hope you found some use in this texture coordinate demo. Also, I plan to do some live streams and make them as interesting as possible, like answering some of your questions in real time and just making cool stuff.